hopefully no tears for me tonight. Um, but thanks everyone for being here tonight. I'm incredibly humbled and so grateful to be standing on this podium. It's really an honor to be a member of the class of 2020 Trinity Athletics Hall of Fame. And first I wanted to extend my congratulations to all of the other athletes and the coaches who are being honored here tonight. It's truly inspiring to hear each and, one of your, each and every one of your stories and what Trinity meant to you as athletes and coaches. And thank you also to the Hall of Fame Induction Committee for selecting me for this special honor and to Drew and the athletic staff who conceived of and put together this evening for us. I know how much work has gone into this. And also, of course, to our president, Joanne Berger Sweeney, for her steadfast leadership during incredibly difficult times in the country and in higher education in general. And finally, thank you to my family and my friends who are here tonight, especially my son, Niall, whose 16th birthday is tonight, and he's here with us. So. We told him we were bringing him to a party for his birthday, and I don't think he thought this was exactly what he had in mind, but he's here, and he's not complaining. So there's a saying you may have heard, you may have heard about rowing, that it's the consummate team sport, and it couldn't be more true. A rowing team is only as good as the people who are in the boat with you. The better the two or the four or the eight rowers who are in the boat can connect and to match and synchronize their movements in the boat, the faster the boat will go from the catch to the drive to the finish of the stroke. But there's more to every rowing team than those folks who are in the boat and ensuring that they're matching from the beginning to the end of the stroke. Equally important is the rowing team outside of the boat. My starting team outside of the boat were my parents. Sonia and Bernie Smith, who are here tonight. They supported me and suffered through many, many years of my attempts to play other sports. Unlike some of the other athletes who are up here tonight, I failed at a myriad of sports before finally hitting upon rowing. Gymnastics, when I couldn't get past the handspring or the round off or the cartwheel or wherever it was. Field hockey, when I quit because I tripped and fell. <laughs> and bang my head on the ground when I was running backwards with a field hockey stick in my hand. Basketball, I could play defense all day long, but I couldn't shoot for anything. Track, when I bruised my knees on the hurdles. Javelin, eh, not so good. Softball, don't forget softball. Swimming, not having much body fat, I sank in the pool. Diving, when I hit my forehead on the board so many times doing an inward pike. That was it, I quit that too. But finally I hit upon rowing when I came to Trinity and my parents were there cheering me on throughout my rowing career, both at Trinity as well as nationally and internationally. Of course, the world championships and the Olympics are pretty fun excuses to go get some world travel in too. The coaching staff at Trinity was another critical component of my outside of the boat team. I was welcomed into the rowing world by Trinity after seeing an eight sitting outside Mather in the fall of my freshman year. I was intrigued by the idea of a sport that took place on the water rather than in the water, unlike Dia. The, in the water wasn't so good for me. But, and also the idea of getting off campus was pretty exciting, so I decided to give it a try. My freshman coach, Meg Picot, who was the class of 1986, instilled in me some of the most fundamental lessons I think a rower and probably most athletes can learn. You can always be tougher than you think you can. And you can always outwork the competition. She challenged our novice team to do 30 push-ups and 30 sit-ups every night before we went to bed because we could be sure that the other teams out there were not doing the same thing. My coach Norman T. Graff, or fondly known as Norm, and of course his dog, Captain, he was a legend of Trinity Rowing. He coached me from my sophomore through my senior year. He coached so many male and female athletes and coaches at Trinity to success, both domestically and internationally. Sadly, we lost him in 2018, but his memory and his legend lives on in the rowing world. He took me seriously as an athlete, despite all of my previous failings. He saw talent in me that, of course, I never saw in myself, having had that experience throughout 
elementary, middle, and high school. He taught me how to hang on the oar handle to effectively use my body weight as leverage to compete against athletes who may be bigger or stronger than me. He taught me that no matter how hard we worked, we could still have fun and we could always have a laugh. And he taught me that at the end of the race, you never ever fall down or sit back in the boat. You sit up and you act like you could do it all over again. And then of course, the other important member of my out of the boat team is my husband, Matt Collins. Even though we attended the same high school, we really met through rowing. He was a 1990 graduate of UMass, a national team rower and a world champion himself. He supported me throughout my rowing career and after, even when in the summer of 1998, one year into my marriage or our marriage, I put my single, which is a one person boat, on the trailer to San Diego to the Chula Vista Training Center and informed him that I had to go to train for the US national team in San Diego for the summer, which turned into the fall and turned into the next three, four years of my life. So this was my out of side of the boat team, the foundation of my success. But getting back to Trinity Rowing just for a moment, I think this program is one of the rowing world's best kept secrets. And it's possibly one of the best kept secrets of Trinity College altogether. It was one of the first programs in the United States to allow women to compete at the, interne at the collegiate level. Women's rowing began at Trinity in 1972 and became varsity in 1976. Some of the notable alumni have gone on to contribute incredibly, incredible things to the sport in high school and at the collegiate and the elite level. Curtis Jordan, the class of 1974, he coached Princeton University men's and women's rowing programs for about 30 years. He has the winningest men's coaching um, record in the history of men's rowing at Princeton. He was a four-time Olympic coach and coach of a bronze medal winning boat in 1996. Andy Anderson, the class of 1975. He's a director of rowing at Groton School for about 40 years, a multi-national team coach. He was the coach of my first elite team in 1991, sort of the fates coinciding of Trinity coming back together at the international level. We won a bronze medal at the World Championships in Vienna, Austria. He's also probably most importantly known as Dr. Rowing, the author of a monthly column that's published in the Rowing News, which is sort of the journal of rowing. The list goes on and on. Phil Carney, class of 1985, coach at Wesleyan for many, many years. Jay Manson, multi-team national, multinational team member, class of 1986. More recent graduates, of course, the Graves brothers, one of whom is sitting here today with us and also a member of the, national, of the rowing um, sorry, the Hall of Fame, his two brothers, and of course, Jillian Zeef, who's still training the class of 2014. Each one of these Trinity Rowing alums deserves to be standing up here today. And the successful contributions that these folks have made to my sport and to the development of future athletes, I think reflects the special experience that this college offers. Trinity may be small in size, but it's big in vision. I learned at Trinity, through my athletics and my academic experience that you may be small in stature, but you nevertheless can expect big things of yourself. In a sport that's often dominated, at least at the US elite level, by division one Ivy League grads from Princeton, Yale, Harvard, and so on, I was and will remain always proud to say that I was a walk-on athlete at Trinity College. And finally, one last shameless plug for Trinity's rowing program and the athletics department here at the college. Well, it feels like a lifetime ago that I rode my last race for Trinity, but through the efforts of the college, the athletics department, and a group of really motivated young rowing alums, they've brought me and a lot of other athletic alums back into the fold. It's so important to support their efforts. So I hope each of you will consider paying it forward and helping to support the future generations of Trinity athletes. Thanks so much for this honor. Good night. Thank you.